So what does caffeine do? I mean, we all consume it in one way or another. At least 90% of the adult population of North America does, as well as 95% of adolescents, according to the Institute for Scientific Information on Coffee. It's in energy drinks, soft drinks, naturally occurring in chocolate, tea, and I count 11 coffee shops within walking distance of my own home. Caffeine is everywhere, but just what does it do? Well, on a surface level, it seems to give energy, but it actually does something entirely different. Caffeine works neurologically to prevent us from being able to metabolize adenosine, and in that way, caffeine prevents us from being able to feel tired. Today, my purpose is to inform you about how caffeine affects our future wakefulness. And to do that, I've cast aside my biases toward my chronic consumption of caffeine and consulted a wide variety of sources, as well as interviewed Dr. Herrick, of the biology faculty here at RCC. So I'm going to begin by talking a little bit about what this molecule called adenosine is and what it does, followed by how caffeine affects the metabolism of adenosine, and finally, just what that means for us. So let's get started. Adenosine is this molecule that makes us feel sleepy. If you've ever taken a biology course before, you may have heard of adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. According to countless scientists the world over, and in the words of McGill University, ATP is the energy currency of all cellular functions. And what's really fascinating about adenosine is that when it attaches to three phosphate groups, hence the name adenosine triphosphate, it's our source of energy. But standing alone, adenosine acts as an inhibitory neurotransmitter that suppresses arousal and promotes sleep, as determined by physiology professor Porka Heisekinen of the University of Helsinki. Now, adenosine accumulates throughout the day through brain activity. And this adenosine is metabolized by binding to adenosine receptors. But these receptors cannot possibly keep up with the rate that adenosine is released. And so eventually, according to Jonathan Schwartz and Thomas Roth in their 2008 paper on the neurophysiology of sleep and wakefulness, adenosine triggers non-rapid eye movement sleep, where the body is most able to metabolize adenosine. And that, during the sleep, when you're not dreaming, you're just sleeping, that is what allows you to, when you wake up, feel tired, oh, feel awake. But now enter caffeine. Caffeine is this bloody bogart that mimics adenosine, thus crashing the party. Its structure is so similar to adenosine that it just punts adenosine out of the way and binds to the adenosine receptors. And this causes us to be less able to feel tired. But we've got all that adenosine left in there, unprocessed, unable to do really anything. So, when caffeine exits your system, that adenosine comes rushing back in and binds to the receptors. And when that happens, we begin to feel tired again. This is commonly known as the caffeine crash, but it's generally not too bad, unless we've been preventing the metabolism of adenosine. And that's precisely what caffeine will do if we're not careful. You see, it takes time to metabolize adenosine, to metabolize caffeine as well. The Annals of Pharmacotherapy Journal published a study by James Moore and Heather Cruz, who determined that caffeine has a half-life of about 5.7 hours. That means that it takes about 5.7 hours to eliminate half of the drug from our systems. But the rest of it may remain in our bodies for over a day. This chart, which is about to show up, hopefully, this chart shows just how long it takes to metabolize adenosine. OK, it's all right. So <laughs> adenosine, well, you see, caffeine remains in our bodies for over 20 hours, and that only takes it down to a trace concentration of 10%. And that's crazy. And when caffeine remains in our systems for that long, we're unable to metabolize 
adenosine during non-rapid eye movement sleep. And when we can't do that, we're going to wake up tired and groggy. From there, we have two options. We can either sleep to metabolize the adenosine so we can feel awake, or we can drink more coffee, block up those receptors, build up a further dependency on caffeine. So let's review. Caffeine is not building up your energy level. It's not replenishing it. It's augmenting it. And that is often an exchange for building up a further dependency on caffeine and potentially feeling increasingly tired in the future. But the longer it's been since your last cup of coffee, the more adenosine you'll be able to metabolize while you sleep, and the less tired and groggy you'll feel when you wake up. And so, what you see, the next time you face the option of consuming caffeine later on in the day, consider whether it's truly worth forcing yourself to face that very same crisis of feeling hopelessly tired in the future. Sometimes it's absolutely worth it, but sometimes it's just not.